All right. Hello, everyone. Sorry about the technical problems. My name is Dario Carboralli with the Wikimedia Foundation, and I am joined here by Daniel Mitchin from the Data Science Institute at the University of Virginia. Um, we want to talk to you today about uh, a bunch of uh, projects uh, that are really closely aligned with this notion of uh, fair data platforms. I don't need to introduce to this audience what fair data uh, means. Uh, uh, this community was really instrumental in getting uh, fair um, off the ground. Um, but I was also inspired this morning by um, Daniel Robinson's talk about uh, uh, building the digital commons and thinking about uh, the notion of uh, not just data that needs to be fair, but also platforms uh, that need to be community owned. And today, we're going to present you one possible way of doing this using a community-owned project uh, and a software behind this. Um, the project is called Wikidata. Quick show of hand out. Many of you have heard of Wikidata? OK, my job is done. <laughs> uh, fantastic. So for those of you who don't know about Wikidata, there will be a hands-on session uh, tomorrow at 3 PM. We're going to try and get you started with your first edit, show you can ingest information into Wikidata if you've never done it before. So please come uh, and join us at 3 PM tomorrow. So we're not going to talk too much about Wikidata today, um, but we're going to try and give you a sense of what this can do for open science, specifically from the context of a federated ecosystem of knowledge bases. Um, quick summary about Wikidata uh, uh, is and what it does. Um, it's a free knowledge uh, base that anyone can edit. It's really to data what Wikipedia is to text. Uh, all data in Wikidata is CC0 licensed. Uh, anyone, anything, bots, and humans can contribute. It covers pretty much all domains of knowledge. Anything you can potentially name uh, legitimately can have an entry on Wikidata. Uh, it's fully revision controlled and collaborative, so you can go back in time and reconstruct any revision and who did what. It is integrated with a semantic web via uh, RDF and a set of uh, um, Sparkle endpoints and, and um, open APIs. Um, it is stable. Um, it is not tied to any specific funding cycle. It's not based on soft money. It's there to stay uh, for the long term. Um, it's actively being developed. Uh, we have a very active community of contributors. Um, and it's uh, an, an open source project. The full stack is open source. And it's also a very active community of contributors, both individual and institutional, participating in the project. Uh, it's currently the fastest growing um, Wikimedia project uh, in terms of growth of active contributors. And Wikidata knows about lots of things. There are currently 50 million entities in, in Wikidata, and there are many statements about that, these entities. Uh, we have currently about uh, half a billion statements uh, that uh, represent uh, a variety of uh, machine-readable information about all these entities. And uh, up until today, we've had uh, about 700 million edits that, uh, from the community that contributed to making this, this knowledge base a reality. And like I said, Wikidata is really uh, not about a specific domain of knowledge. It's about many different things. You can find content in Wikidata about people, about uh, buildings, about uh, astronomical bodies. Um, there's a growing and important part of Wikidata, which is about creative works, and scholarly papers, and metadata, about these papers. So lots and lots of contents uh, you, can, you can discover. Um, and um, there's a, a subset of uh, Wikidata which I think we all care specifically about, which is about uh, research-related entities or scholarly relevant entities. And um, just to give you a sense of what, what this means, um, I pulled up here um, one example of a statement and how it links to other entities. So we have a, um, an item in Wikidata that represents uh, Zika virus. That code that starts with a Q is the way in which Wikidata identifies entities. So it's called a QID. Um, every item has a persistent and unique uh, identifier. So uh, Q202864 is the QID for Zika virus. Zika virus is the English language label for this item. And this item is a statement that asserts that Zika virus has as its natural reservoir, that's the name of the property, um, Aedes incili, a species of mosquito with its own Wikidata item. And you can see this statement uh, is linked to the work 
the scholarly work that basically supports that statement and provides provenance for that uh, piece of information. So the paper itself is another item. And the paper is linked to information about the funder. Uh, in this case, uh, it was research funded by the CDC. The publisher, uh, it was a paper published in PLOS, Neglected Tropical Diseases. And the, publish, the, the publisher, sorry, the outlet in itself was, uh, is linked to the, uh, the publisher. So you can see basically that a single uh, bit of, of knowledge, a single um, um, atom of, uh, of, of research as extracted from a paper can be linked to the entire institutional provenance of where this research came from through um, statements that you can represent in Wikidata. And in terms of the, uh, the coverage, we mentioned before different types of content exist in Wikidata. Um, this is an example of content that was added by the, uh, the GeneWiki project. The GeneWiki project, for those of you who don't know it, is an amazing uh, bio-curation project that has basically adopted uh, Wikidata now. They used to work on Wikipedia before. But basically now they're curating all entries on Wikidata to represent a ton of information of relevance uh, to the biomedical sciences. And of course, uh, when we're talking about uh, um, scholarly relevant content, this is not just about uh, proteins and genes, but also about the people and the institutions who make science. And uh, uh, this is just an example of queries you can run uh, on Wikidata to retrieve information about uh, what Wikidata knows about uh, uh, Canadian biologists, for example. Um, there's a, um, a PDF with a, with a slice that I circulated. You can click on the Sparkle query and get this data live from the Wikidata query service. This is a map of institutions where Canadians got their PhD from. And since we're at McGill, uh, we also have information about uh, um, authors and their um, uh, co-authorship patterns. Uh, this is a partial co-author graph of uh, authors affiliated with McGill. And we also have information about uh, uh, prices, scholarly prices, and who received them, uh, and, and so forth. So this is just a, a quick introduction to uh, the kind of content you can find in Wikidata and the kind of like uh, relations that Wikidata can represent. But of course, Wikidata cannot and should not represent everything you can name. There's so much more information that is out there in different knowledge repositories. And uh, uh, we believe that actually this is one of the, uh, of the powers of Wikidata, the fact that it can act as a central hub that connects a vast federated ecosystem of knowledge bases uh, that can interact with Wikidata. Um, and so in the second part of the talk, Daniel is going to give you a sense of how this federation was working, uh, both at the level of content and the level of uh, software. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll sit here because I'm closer to the presentation. Um, the, the I'll use the mic, yes, OK. So um, one way in which uh, the uh, ecosystem can interact is through uh, use of persistent identifiers. Wikidata is um, informed about uh, lots of different identifiers, thousands of them to uh, all sorts of databases. Some of them are shown on this example here. Um, Another uh, way in which Wikidata can be integrated with the wider uh, knowledge ecosystem is by basically taking uh, the software, which is uh, written in a modular way, um, and installing it uh, separately. So um, if you look at what Wikidata is technically, then it is basically, uh, it uses the same software um, as Wikipedia, um, but it has certain plugins that allow it to be semantic. Um, so here, um, well, as some sort of motivation for, for this um, kind of approach. Um, so there is a uh, project called Linked Jazz. I think it also has ties to, uh, to Canada. Uh, and they're actually using uh, Wikibase because uh, many other options didn't uh, serve their needs. And uh, they, this way they can share um, their curation workflows. So <clears throat> what is Wikibase? It is this generic media wiki that uh, supports Wikipedia and all its sister projects, but it has certain plugins that allow it to write PDF. That actually came up in a, uh, one of the discussions yesterday. It's very hard to write PDF here. This platform does it natively, and you don't even notice it when you're doing it. Um, RDF, RDF. Did I say PDF? OK. Very, uh, force is beyond the PDF, so the next uh, letter is RDF. Um, 
And uh, then uh, revision control is very important, just as any Wikipedia entry has a history tab. The same uh, mechanism works on Wikidata, and it is basically fair by default. You can change that if you run your own instance. You can make it unfair in certain instances, but the default is it's fair. Um, and uh, it does that uh, in, well, the plugins is actually a set of plugins and tools around them. So one of them is more or less a repository that uh, hosts the data that you're interested in. And then there is a client uh, well, uh, software that allows to pull that information from the repository into some other places. So for instance, information from Wikidata can be reused on Wikipedias or in your own systems. It is actually used by uh, lots of uh, external tools, including all major search engines and uh, language assistance and so on. Um, on top of that, uh, it comes with a query service that allows you to, to run Sparkle queries. I will try to give that, uh, that a demo if we still have time. And it has lots of reusable components, so you can uh, basically use any individual pieces of that. You don't have to take it as an entire set. Um, also, in terms of the organization, if you uh, look at the URL on Wikipedia, it would be wikipedia.org and then something wiki and then the name of uh, that thing in the language of that particular Wikipedia. Here on Wikidata, it's always this identifier, but and then you can actually specify uh, which um, format you want it in. Uh, and uh, so the default for uh, Wikidata is basically JSON, rather than the free text that you have, the, uh, the wiki text that you have on Wikipedia, but you can have other uh, formats as well. And if you uh, access Wikidata, through uh, some automated process, you can do content negotiation, so you basically can pick which one is more interesting for you. And if a human accesses this, we uh, default to HTML. Um, so this has actually many faces, and that, the title of that slide is stolen from a blog post series on the Wikimedia Foundation blog that is linked from here, where they uh, highlight some of those examples. Um, and here you see a query to a registry of Wikibase instances, which is this, uh, itself hosted on a Wikibase. So we're eating our own dog food here. Um, and I'll try to see whether this actually works. So this should lead us to a uh, Sparkle endpoint. Uh, yes, um, so I can just run the query here. So what it does is it asks this endpoint for this registry, uh, which individual instances of Wikibase do you know? And it did so via the Sparkle endpoint, so this is live. And so here we have a list of those um, individual ones. Uh, the latest uh, one is OpenStreetMap. They have recently, in, they already had a wiki, uh, and they just uh, recently installed those plugins so that they can also make use of these RDF functionalities. I'll not go into details here because we don't have much time, but I'll pick some of those examples that you would find if you were clicking around on that map. Um, and uh, show them where where are we? <laughs> okay, yeah. So that the tour would be you can click. It's all clickable. The results of those queries, and you can spin. <laughs> it's the, the turtles all the way down. Uh, so one of those examples is uh, in Wiki Data. Uh, Dario had shown you there are certain properties here in this database, which is about uh, basically internet art. Um, they have defined their own properties. So they have uh, properties, for instance, um, d uh, last modified or uh, depends on or things like that. And they use this to represent uh, works of art, uh, like internet art, uh, some uh, things that are very ephemeral and so on. And uh, the main reason why they used a separate um, database and not uh, Wikidata itself is that they uh, are working with art and many of those pieces of art, they are under copyright and they can't be uh, loaded onto Wikimedia Commons, which requires free licenses. Here's another um, database called Lingua Libre, um, which is actually French um, mainly, but it is meant to, to help record the pronunciation of every word in every language. And it helps you, it, it takes like a few seconds to set it up so that you can uh, record any word that you want to enter into that database. And they use this structured database in the background. So this could also be uh, interesting for like the uh, First Nation approach or, or something like this. And uh, yeah, so they have entries about the individual recordings that have been made for this word. So not just an entry for every word, but uh, for every recording of every word. And uh, yeah, you can click on this and then you get to that entry. Um, here, the next one is a historian's database where, uh, yeah, Illuminati, some people might have heard of, is a secret society, uh, or it was, 
Now it's not so secret anymore. And so there are some researchers who actually found a box called the Swedish box because it spent 100 years in Sweden and is now being opened and, and analyzed. It contains letters that those, the members of those Illuminati have written over uh, the years, usually under pseudonyms, using false dates and, and things like that. And so they're now trying to figure out who actually wrote what to whom and who responded and when did they actually meet in real life, all these kind of things. This is encoded in a database for which they are also using Wikibase. And here you have a query. You can ask the database, OK, what are the places from where they have sent letters? And then you can color code that by who actually sent it according to the knowledge of the project as it is now. And this knowledge is changing all the time because they're continuing to do, to do research. Um, the next one is, uh, well, a typical timeline uh, of things that you can get out of Wikidata. Um, and so we're in, in this federation part of the talk. Now we're tr trying to combine this with a, uh, the query that we've seen already for all the um, Wikibase instances that are in, indexed in the Wikibase registry. So we have Wikidata and Wikibase registry, that, which are two different instances of Wikibase. And we can then com uh, run a combined query, and I hope to actually show that as well, um, which goes out to both of those databases and then pulls the information together in one graph. That's what actually is called uh, federation in this semantic web context. Um, and if this works, well, sometimes it does. Some, uh, I'll, I'll leave it open in the background. Um, yeah. Now, uh, what, what it should show us is that image that I have here. No, that, that is on this present slide. Uh, it's confusing. Um, it was much quicker when I tested it uh, earlier this morning. <laughs> um, but there is a red flag here, basically. There, there's, there, the, the sparkle is four minutes out of date. OK, here. It's, it's loading. Um, Ah, it's actually a different query. Ha! Huh. I forgot to update. I forgot to update the link. So here you have a query. Um, what is it? Oh yeah, it's it's um, paintings that are located somewhere in uh, collections in Canada. Um, so I'll update the link. Uh, the that's a pity because I actually wanted to show this combined query. We we will we will fix that in the in the shared presentation. Okay. Um, where was I? Present. So, but the point is, you can actually combine uh, results from uh, such uh, separate queries, and uh, then, um, yeah, this way you, you can bring together different data sets, even though they don't reside in the same database. And that makes reuse and, and further analysis much simpler. So, um, uh, we have shown Sparkle endpoints. It's important to note that Sparkle is more generic. It's not specific to Wikibase. So once you have a Wikibase uh, set up with this, with its Sparkle endpoint, it can basically talk to any uh, Sparkle endpoint and can be addressed from any Sparkle endpoint as long as you configure it to allow that. Um, all Wikibase instances, since they're implemented on MediaWiki, they uh, have the MediaWiki API, which is very powerful and is used uh, in many different contexts. There is a Docker container that allows you to uh, easily install uh, Wikibase. Um, then there is a the media r repository of uh, all the Wikipedias and the related projects called Wikimedia Commons. It is moving itself to using Wikibase. Um, actually, two instances, one for the files, from one for the metadata. Um, and, and so yet another um, big user. There is an entire ecosystem of tools that have been built around Wikipedia and Wikidata, and this is now being adapted to be uh, usable across Wikibase instances. There are discussions around how to share data models. So for instance, keep in mind those, uh, the Illuminati, the uh, audio recordings of those words and the, the internet art that we were talking about. Uh, if they were, for instance, all uh, talking or referring to some things that are related to Montreal, then uh, they need to express uh, somehow that they're talking about the same Montreal um, and so on. So there are uh, discussions around how to uh, share data models. For this, there is a series of workshops. There are a number of non-public um, projects around Wikibase. So the Wikibase registry is only for public Wikibase instances. One of those non-public ones is actually run at the OCLC, a large consortium of libraries in the United States, uh, which is also looking into using uh, Wikibase um, at scale. And that leaves us with the question, OK, what about uh, using uh, Wikibase at the scale of countries? And so uh, 
yeah, last month there was a, a meeting where someone actually had a slide on this. Uh, and there is actually, if you look in the Wikibase registry, there is Lib Canada. Uh, they have a, um, a public instance uh, where they're testing uh, Wikibase. Right now it has only one item. It's called first item. <laughs> but yeah, that's a test, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and then the, the main question that remains is, OK, um, if I have certain data that I want to share, should I use uh, Wikidata or Wikibase? And um, the answer is, in general, it depends. Um, <laughs> but uh, some of the parameters that are in, important here are uh, whether you want uh, the governance, uh, how do you want to, the governance? Uh, for Wikidata, governance is by the Wikidata community. For your Wikibase, it would be you or your community. Um, the granularity of the, the information. So in that lingua libre, you've seen it is about the audio recordings of a sp uh, particular word. Very granular, one could say. And uh, Wikidata is rather generic. It comes out of this encyclopedic tradition of Wikipedia. The licensing, if you have stuff that doesn't fit into the public domain, it can't go into Wikidata. Um, then in terms of funding, if you prefer soft money, then you can go for Wikibase. If you uh, prefer uh, uh, something more stable, then you can t uh, talk to national libraries or you can try uh, to go for Wikidata. And then other criteria like identifier mappings uh, and languages are important. So uh, Wikidata works in 300 languages. Most other databases don't. And uh, also many other databases don't need it. But for instance, in Canada, I could well imagine like at least two or maybe a dozen languages being useful in certain contexts. So that was it. Thank you. Questions? Please use the microphone for questions. Cool. Uh, just a curious, first a curious question. Is this related to the, the development that went on a million years ago of semantic wiki? Is that, is that sort of, was that sort of the beginning I'll, of this? I'll take that. Um, so Semantic Wiki was a predecessor of uh, Wikibase, right? It was uh, built in a way that was not uh, really modular. It was really a fork of the main software that powers Wikipedia. And uh, Wikibase was designed to basically make this like seamlessly integrated with uh, the standard MediaWiki software. And so it's now technically an extension of, of MediaWiki. Okay. Uh, it, it provides a similar functionality but now I want to say, like the vast majority of people looking at using open source wiki software for representing structured data and linked data are lo looking at Wikibase, not so much semantic media wiki. Okay, and one other specific question. You were talking about the granularity of uh, referencing certain ideas or concepts in a, in, within a paper. So what's the granularity of the QIDs? And, and can, you, can you attach a QID to a part of something else that has a QID? Um, yes. So, in fact, uh, um, this is really something we'll dig into uh, tomorrow during the uh, hands-on tutorial. But uh, every statement in Wikidata uh, can be a reference very granularly to um, um, a URL or uh, an, external, an external paper specified by a DOI or an identifier. We also have the possibility of referencing very specific sections of a, of a paper uh, or a book. Uh, we also have experiments using annotation tools like Hypothesis uh, to basically link a statement to a very specific fragment of the text that provides evidence for the statement. So the reference model for Wikidata is very agnostic. You can use whatever is useful to back that statement. Um, and by using that, you will make the statement themselves machine readable. So you could select, for example, all statements sourced to a specific book or an edition of a book and aggregate this information right through that Sparkle query that, that Daniel uh, showed you before. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I remember Wikidata has had used a graph database and that semantic media wiki back in the way, and I think Wikibase still uses a relational database. Any cons uh, performance consequences? So uh, I'm not the person to answer the performance issues because this is my colleague's uh, job uh, in, at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, right now we're using Blaze Graph as a- Oh, you are? Signal. We are, yeah. Uh, and we're constantly looking for 
improving the, uh, the performance of the, of the backend. Uh, right now, that query service will time out for specific types of queries. So, so what I understand is Wikibase mixes the relational database layer Correct. used by uh, Wiki, <laughs> the, the Wikimedia yep. and the Blaze Graph. The, the bottleneck is not the relational database Excellent. because it's really for hu mostly human readable uh, content. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And because we now have lunch, I suggest any further questions please to, to either address them during lunch or I guess in your session tomorrow if it's organized to that.